I wish I had two turntables and a mixer. Probably had something more clever to say. Hey guys, how y'all doing out there? It's me, your boy, Malik, holding it down one more time for Power Director University. I had a few requests to show you guys how I get down in Power Director in the audio mixing room. So I'm gonna show you how I do that in Power Director 14 Ultimate. Let's get into it. Here we are in Power Director 14 Ultimate. Now, before we jump off into this audio thing for everybody, I wanna remind you of three things. The thumb. If you like the content in this video, click on the thumb that's pointed in the upward direction. It helps other people know that this content is good. Comments. If you leave me comments, if you have a question, I will respond to you. If I can't help you, I'll point you in the right direction to get you the help that you need. And lastly, subscribe. If you don't subscribe to this channel, you will not know when I upload a new video and you'll be missing out on all of the power director goodness that I bring to you. Let's jump off into this tutorial. Now, what I'll be focusing on is just a few things that I think are key things when it comes to editing your audio. So if I don't touch on something that you think that is important or whatever, just leave me a comment and I'll try to help you out. All right, so let's start off with removing audio from a video clip. There's two ways you can go about doing that. In the actual timeline, you can go ahead and right click on a clip that has video and audio. You can tell this one has video and audio because it has uh, the scenes on the top and then it has the waveform on the bottom. If I right click on this, I can go to link, unlink video and audio. When I click on that, Bam, they are now unlinked. I can actually click on this audio waveform and drag it into a different track. Now the other way to remove audio from a video clip is in the library, you can right click on a clip that has audio and video, and then you can select extract audio. Now, when you select extract audio, it's gonna ask you for a location to save the audio file. You can pick a different location if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. And then it also adds that audio file to the library in a WAV format. I'm gonna clean up this stuff. All right, so now we got a separate little audio file here, so let's play with it. Let's have a little fun with audio. Let's have some fun. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stretch out my timeline just so that you can see more of this clip. Now you can left click on the time here and drag it, or you can just click on view entire movie. Now, hopefully now you can actually see that there's a little white line on this waveform here. But if I click on this little white line, I'm gonna create what's called a keyframe. Now, I can create as many keyframes as I want, and I can use these keyframes to lower or raise the audio in different sections of this audio clip. So that gives me the ability to really play with the audio move it all over the place and do what I want to. Now, if I add a keyframe and I decide ah, I don't want this one here anymore, I can just left click on top of this keyframe. Once it becomes a red dot with a white circle around it, I can left click, hold down my left mouse, drag this above this clip, and then when I see that the white circle has disappeared from around the red dot, I can let go. And you also see that it creates a little trash bin. Now I can let go of the left mouse and that keyframe's gone. Now, if I was like, you know, I messed up all the keyframes and I hate this thing, I wanna get rid of all of these changes I made, I can just right click on the file and then I can go to restore to original volume level. And boom, all the keyframes are gone, everything's back to the original, all right? 
Now, let's say I wanted to remove a section of audio. So let me play with this audio track, this audio file here. So let's say I wanted to, like I said, remove a section of it. I can select it by left clicking on this audio clip, and then I can click on the trim button. Uh, if I want to see more information in this waveform, I can once again left click, hold my left mouse down up here in the timeline section and drag this out so I can see more. Or I can click on the increase magnification button right here and then I can see more information in the waveform as well. Now you can be very precise when you trim your audio. What I mean by that is you can drag your playhead where you want to change the audio or you can actually click on this next frame button and it will move one frame at a time so you can get exactly where you want and then make your audio adjustment there. If you don't want to do it by frame, there's options here to change this seek by option. You click on that and you can move by frame, second, or minute. Now, let's say I have my playhead where I want to start the audio. Well, now I can click on the mark in button. What that does is it grays out everything to the left of the playhead and the information on the left will not be part of this audio anymore. And let's say I want it to just have from this position to this position. That's all the audio I want. Now I can click on the mark out button and it grays out everything after that. So only this section here in the middle is the section that I'm going to keep. So if you want to test out how everything sounds, you can click on output and you can click on play and it will only play the section that is not grayed out. If you don't like how that sounds, you can make adjustments by using the next frame buttons and then you can do mark in there and change that up. Once you're done and you got it where you want, just click on OK. And now it will change your clip in the timeline to just that section that you selected. So I'm going to remove that because I want all that audio. I still need all my audio. Now that we're done with that trim thing, let's go ahead and open up the audio mixing room and show you some stuff in there. So you can click on the audio mixing room button or you can press F9 on your keyboard to open up the audio mixing room. Now you see that the audio mixing room has volume controls for the voice track, the music track, and up to six audio tracks or timeline tracks on the timeline. So the first thing we want to talk about is normalizing your audio. So if you have audio on the same timeline track, so I have all of my audio right now on track one, you'll notice that for audio one now, this normalize button is active. When they were not on the same track, it was not active. If I drag this down to timeline track two, the one on two will become active. So basically you can normalize video that's on the same timeline track. Normalizing video means that it normalizes the volume so that the volume of the two audio clips or video clips match. So the audio is the same. So if I were to now click on normalize, you'll notice that the waveforms are going to change. So let's click on normalize. And you notice that this waveform got smaller to match the audio in this waveform. So now they're both the same. So that's cool. Really good way to get your audio all matched up for your uh, videos to seem more professional. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is something called audio ducking. So audio ducking is when you reduce the volume of one track and raise the volume of another to either mix the audio together 
at specific levels or you can mute one audio track while the other audio track plays. So let's go ahead and move this audio clip up here and I'm going to move this one here. Now, first thing I'm going to do is move my playhead to where I want to reduce the audio. And I think that's a good point right there. I'm just guessing right now. Of course, you want to be more precise probably in making your video. So I have my playhead where I want to reduce the audio. So I'm going to go to audio one and I'm going to select fade out. Now you see that it created a fade there from the point where my playhead was to a specific point a few seconds after that. Now I'm going to go to the music clip because I need this to be at the same position where that first keyframe is. So I'm going to go to the music clip. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to select cut. And then I'm going to bring my playhead back to where that keyframe is. I'm going to select track two. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select paste and insert. So now this clip is starting. The music is starting right where it's going to start to fade out. So now that I have this here, I want to go to audio two and I'm going to select fade in. So now we see that there is no audio at the beginning and then it fades in to the same point that the video clip faded out. Now I'm going to move my playhead to where I want the music to stop or actually start to fade out. I'm going to go to audio two and I'm going to select fade out. So we see the fade created there as well. Now I'm going to left click on this video clip to activate it. And I'm going to bring the audio one volume all the way down to zero. What that's going to do is it's going to create a keyframe here and it's going to make the audio zero at that point. Now I'm going to move my playhead to the end of the music clip, which is below. And I'm going to move my audio one volume back up to the original audio position. And so now you see that I have my audio up, it fades down and then it goes back up and plays at the regular sound. In this bottom clip, the audio goes up, stays up, then plays down. That's audio ducking people. So now that I have it all set up, I'm going to click on play and let you see what it sounds like. All right, folks, that's all the audio tips I'm giving you for the day. I'm done. I had enough. I'm out. All right, guys, you know the routine. So, asbe un favor, por favor. The thumb, the one that's pointed in the upward direction. Click it, like it, live it, love it, hug it. Show the thumb some love, baby. Comment. You got comments? Leave comments. You got questions? I answer them. I will always get back to you. If I can't help you, I'll point you in the right direction to get you the help that you need. And last, but definitely not least, if you want to see great power director content on a regular basis, you got to subscribe to my channel. If you don't subscribe, you're going to miss out whenever I upload a video. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.